Damaging new text messages surfacing from FBI officials Peter Strzok and Lisa Page. They suggest possible coordination between the Obama White House, the CIA and FBI early in the Trump-Russia probe. Names that appear include White House Chief of Staff Dennis McDonough, CIA Chief John Brennan, FBI Director James Comey and Senator Harry Reid. Page and Strzok apparently attempting to cover their tracks. This text, three months before the presidential election. Make sure you can lawfully protect what you sign. Just thinking about Congress, FOIA, etc., you probably know better than me. Andrew McCabe, the top FBI official fired by Attorney General Jeff Sessions hours before his planned retirement, is now soliciting donations online for his legal defense fund. No word yet on whether Clinton donors, which supported McCabe's wife during a run for uh, Virginia Senate, uh, State Senate, have pitched in as yet. Well, joining me now, Chris Farrell, Director of Investigations and Research for Judicial Watch. Chris Farrell, welcome to the show again. Good to see hey, you, sir. Uh, explain to me how the struck page messages going backwards and forwards brings President Obama, the Obama name, into play. Go through it for me. Sure. Uh there's clear evidence in their own language, their own text messages, explaining how they were communicating, coordinating with White House officials. Uh, for example, there's a, there's a Lisa Page text message that we uncovered a few weeks back that says, quote, POTUS wants to know everything we're doing. That is pretty clear language by anyone's standard. We also know that Andy McCabe had meetings on his calendar with uh, uh, Lisa Monaco, who was the Obama White, ha uh, Obama White House Homeland Security Director. And guess who she used to work for? Mr. Mueller. So this is all very cozy, and it's very apparent now with the addition of Brennan, who's, at least in his last few tel uh, television appearances, seems mm. somewhat un unhinged, yeah. uh, that the, there was direct White House involvement in this, if not coordination. This is the kind of stuff that would make Richard Nixon blush. <laughs> this is deadly serious stuff, and I'm glad that you covered it, but it should be, you know, a 10-minute segment and right. not a, a reader at the head of, at the, head of the news. Uh, for, please forgive me for breaking into this particular segment on this subject, but I, please go back to John Brennan sure. and what he said about the president. I saw that. I heard it. That blew me away. I'm astonished that a former director of the CIA would say that about a sitting president. Go. Yeah, I mean, he may be a political opponent and have all sorts of personal opinions, but the man has no integrity and no dignity. He has no business as a former CIA director sitting there and sort of, you know, free associating and speculating about what he thinks might be. It's a, it's a disservice to the country. It's a disservice to the office of the presidency. This guy is humiliating himself. He's turning himself into a cartoon character by making reckless comments that really denigrate the office and really undermine the public's faith not just in the presidency and the government generally, but in who picked this guy to be CIA director. And this is really reckless conduct. Um, now, we have the Utah prosecutor, <coughs> Mr. Huber, and we have Michael Horowitz. I believe they are both Obama holdovers. They are. And they are going to be investigating the Obama administration. This is what makes What's the American on? public crazy. This is the kind of nonsense that they try to blow a fastball past the American public. And we're supposed to just stand there and say, oh, okay, you're doing something. I've told uh, on the show earlier, look, the inspector general's office is where the truth goes to die. And now you've got an outsider Obama appointee from Utah. Um, he may be a wonderful man. I'm not, I'm not attacking him personally. But he doesn't necessarily have the biggest heavy hitter resume in the world. Uh, and he's supposed to come in and he's going to clean up what's been going on. And, and let's circle well, back to your opening comment about the level of involvement from the Obama White House in, in staging this attack on the, the incoming president. Uh, th this makes Judicial Watch supporters crazy. It makes Lou Dobbs Tonight <laughs> viewers crazy. Anybody who's paying attention, they're throwing something at the television right now. Uh, you see so little of it. Now, Lou is really the point man on this. I mean, he's, he he's got more out there than anybody else. And I'm just trying to follow in his footsteps here. But You're doing I'm a great astonished. job. Well, I'm, I'm <laughs> really astonished that so little of this appears, not just in the mainstream media, but anywhere else. 
I make speaking engagements around the country. I talk to folks who uh, consider themselves very, you know, politically aware and motivated, whether it's business leaders, civic leaders, and others. And I lay out the story I just did for you in, in greater detail, and they're astonished. Yeah. People don't know that opening line about the White House coordination with this whole Comey, Strzok, Page, McCabe. It's a conspiracy, literally. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but you're no, right. Not at all. When, when you use the word conspiracy, I'm nodding my head because, sir, you are right. It is. Chris Farrell, we do appreciate you being with us tonight and always. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir.